The notorious 60-40 mix of stocks and bonds worked well for a long time. In fact, too well. And this year's sharp decline has upset a lot of 60-40 apple carts and caused more investors and advisors to look for greater diversification beyond stocks and bonds. And managed futures have certainly been the beneficiary of that trend. Today's ETF Battles features a head-to-head contest between KMLM from Crane Shares and DBMF from Dynamic Beta Investments. So who wins the ETF battle? Find out right after this. This is ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. So good to see you again. And we appreciate having you here. As a reminder, the ETF matchups that we do on this program come from you, the audience. So if you've got a certain ETF matchup or contest that you'd like to see, send us your ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. If we choose your battle, you win your choice of an ETF Battles coffee mug or a shirt. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got links to our program judges, along with our program sponsor, Direction Investments. Plus, join the waiting list for our new margin of safety investing tool. Again, the link is provided below. Managed future funds stand out as a rare bright spot in a tough market environment. The strategy is momentum-based with traders relying on systematic models to execute bets across a variety of asset classes, both long and short. And assets in managed futures funds have doubled to around $5 billion over the past year alone. It's a pretty impressive move. And today's ETF showdown was requested by Daniel Buck via Twitter. He wanted to see KMLM from Crane Shares go up against DBMF from Dynamic Beta Investments. So thank you, Daniel, for that fantastic battle suggestion. Judging today's contest, we've got an illustrious duo, Mike Akins with ETF Action and Dave Natig with Vetify. Judges, great to see both of you. Welcome back. Thanks for having us. It's great to be here, Ron. Good to see you, Dave. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then our mystery category. Now for mystery, that's where you, our judges, can pick any factor or multiple factors that you feel are crucial to today's contest. Our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's better choices elsewhere. They can also offer split decisions. It's just up to them. I've got the scorekeeping chores at the end of the program. We'll declare an overall winner. Keep in mind, none of the battles that we do on this program are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So let's kick things off with the first category. That's cost. Dave, please get us started. Well, this one's pretty close to a wash. So DBMF, if you actually dig into the prospectus, it's 85 basis points in management fee. Uh, Depending on what source you're looking at, you might see 95 basis points. That's some acquired fees of about 10 basis points uh, and interest expenses. Not uncommon in a more complex strategy like this. KMLM is between 90 and 92 basis points, depending on which set of documents you want to look at. I think it's fair to say these are both 90 basis points funds. Uh, That's expensive for any kind of strategy in an ETF wrapper, but given that this is a pretty a niche strategy with some pretty complicated implementation underneath the hood. I don't think those are aggressively out, out you know, overpriced, uh, but they are both expensive. That's a strong start. Thank you, Dave. Mike, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of cost between these two ETFs? Yeah, I think uh, Dave, you know, walked through all the the relevant factors. So I will just add my two cents and that, you know, there's, there are certain areas of the market where expenses really matter and there are certain areas that don't. This is one of the areas where it's not nearly as important as other categories. Um, if I have to give a winner, I'm going to give it to DBMF simply because it's a little bit larger and a little more liquidity. But really, it comes down to which strategy best aligns with your ideology. That takes us to exposure strategy. And Mike, you're still up. So break it down for us. Yeah. So now we get into the fun part, right? Um, you know, you get into managed futures and you're not going to be able to log onto a website and simply say, you know, what do I own? Um, it's, it's a whole, it's a lot more dust off your old due diligence process of understanding the process, understanding the managers. And I think that's really key here. Um, both strategies have, you know, the, the standard managed futures systematic approach to it. But to me, there's one big differing factor and that is active versus passive. Um, In this space, um, believe it or not, coming from me, I actually like the concept of active. 
um, you know, which is the DBMF. Um, they have a very defined process. They're tracking um, a, a number of hedge fund and they're replicating a hedge fund universe, but they have that active overlay to be nimble as the markets change. Um, and I think I'll talk a little bit more about that in our performance, but I like that. I mean, I think when you're looking at managed futures, you're evaluating the manager as much as you're evaluating the process in this case. And I like the ability of the manager to step in and evaluate and be more nimble as they change. Um, that being said, KMLM has a very diverse basket of 11 commodities, um, six bond markets, um, you know, uh, six currency and five bond markets they track, has a systematic process. Um, it's done very well. If you like the transparency of that process, knowing exactly what's going on, you may like um, KMLM better because there is a little bit more understanding if you go through and read that rule book. But for me in this space, I'm giving it to DBMF because of that active overlay and the ability to be a little bit more nimble as macro trends shift in the market. Thank you, Mike. Dave, you're up next. Exposure strategy, how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, Mike hit all the salient points here. I, too, am a fan of active management for this kind of exposure. Uh, this is the kind of thing that changes on a dime, these types of strategies. What you're in today could literally be the opposite of what you're in a month from now. That's one of the attractions of managed futures is you're going both long and short based on whatever signals the manager has here. Um, I point out that these are very different funds despite the fact they look very similar on the hood. The correlation between these two since the oldest inception is only about 0.45. So while they're both doing great this year and are giving you that sort of counter-correlated performance, they have very different approaches here. I'm a fan of the active strategy here as well, so I would give this to DBMF. Next up is performance, and Dave, you're still up, so give us your analysis. Well, let me turn that right upside down, what I just said there, right? So there's a clear winner here in terms of recent performance, and that's KMLM. It's up 42% year to date as we're recording this, about 34, 35% on a trailing 12 month basis. That's quite above what we're seeing in DBMF, which is only up 33% year to date, only up 30% trailing 12 months. Uh, most of that change happened very recently. In the last 90 days or so, KMLM has just been on fire. It's been in the right place at the right time. All of its longs have worked for it very well. DBMF has been in a little bit more of a holding pattern just very recently. This is to be expected. This is a volatile market with lots going on in every one of these sectors, whether it's bonds or currency. We've seen moves in currency we haven't seen in decades, right? So these are high volatility spaces. You would expect them to be quite different, but on a performance basis, you just got to give it to KMLM here. Mike, you're up next in terms of performance. How do you see it? I think Dave's got like a spy can read into my, my talking points, but he hit everything great. So I'll keep it short. Um, I, I agree. KMLM on an actual basis is, is your clear winner. Um, you can't argue with that. Um, I do think though, you're, you're buying a fund for looking forward. Um, and I think the market cycle can and will change very quickly in the near future. Um, and I think to that extent, um, I like the ability to be able for that, this type of strategy to change quicker. So I'm still going to give it to DBMF, but I'm doing it on a forward looking basis. Um, so big, big star there, um, fully recognizing how well KMLM has done. And I, like I said, if you really like that transparency, knowing the buckets you're going to have and the exposure you're going to have in the strategy, KMLM is going to be more transparent. But for me, DBMF fits the performance thing there. And I've got to throw in, go over my, my shot clock here, but I got to throw in one thing to note. Um, both these strategies and generally, when raising assets and putting a strategy in the marketplace, um, history matters. Um, and you, it's better to have a longer track record that people can get into. Both these strategies have very short time periods. So I went ahead and did a quick analysis this morning, ran some screens in our database on mutual funds, because this is managed futures is not new. And some of the largest asset managers in the world have been running managed futures for um, decades. And if you go back and look at some of the largest managed futures, talking like names like Goldman Sachs, PEMCO, AQR, um, just note that managed futures is no different than value or momentum in the fact that things go in and out of favor. And if you look at like a five-year time period from like to set, you know, 2014 to 2019, the biggest managed futures mutual funds were basically flat or lost money. Um, so, you know, just keep in mind, and I'll get to a little bit in my mystery, but the short track record is going to look amazing. But when evaluating the strategy, maybe go look at some mutual funds, some managers you trust with good reputations, and note that while a good managed future fund 
is never going to have crazy drawdowns and it's going to have, um, you know, good correlation, um, negative correlation to the broader bond and equity markets. Um, both of these hit those points so far in their early history. But just know that this is an anomaly. They, they launched going into a ideal time period for this type of strategy and keep it in mind when you're doing your analysis. Our judges are bringing it and uh, I'm enjoying the analysis. I don't know about you. So that's going to take us next to our mystery battle category. This is where our judges can pick a certain factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So, Mike, you're up. What is your mystery battle category and which of these two ETFs stands out? All right. So for this mystery battery category, I'm going to go back to portfolio construction. and I'm going to dust off one of my Karate Kid lessons from Mr. Miyagi. And I'm going to talk a little bit about strategic versus tactical allocation. Um, are you using managed futures strategically or are you doing it tactically? I would argue that this is a strategic allocation in a portfolio if you believe in it. Um, if you'd like tactical, then you could have bought the dollar or commodities, which with these strategies have been allocating to all year. And you could have done that tactically for half the cost, much more transparent and made that decision yourself. So moving to strategic, you, you get down to the old Mr. Miyagi lesson of, you know, if, if you're a grape and you walk middle of the road, you know, Oh, so if you walk right side of the road, great. If you walk left side of the road, great. If you walk middle of the road, sooner or later, squish just like grape. Same thing. If you're going to invest in managed futures, invest in them. If you do managed futures, so-so, sooner or later, squish just like grape. And I think that's a really important thing when you're thinking about this strategy is what is my strategic allocation and believe in your manager, do your due diligence, stay to the process because – Right now, those people that have had that allocation are reaping the benefits, but a lot of people, and you can see it in the flows in this category, gave up on it in the 10-year bull, bull run prior to what we're seeing in this current market environment. Dave, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and which of these two ETFs wins it? So I'm going to go with something somewhat similar to what Mike was saying. I agree with everything he said about how you should be thinking about managed futures. It should be a small but spicy part of your strategic allocation. And because of that, I think really being fully invested in something is important. I'm going to give this to DBMF, and my mystery category is concentration. I like the fact that DBMF only holds 8 to 12 positions. It doesn't go into 25 different things that it always has to have an opinion on. KMLM following an index is always going to have a broader basket that's part of its mandate. To me, that waters down the point of having this managed futures uh, exposure in the first place, which is to really give you something that's zigging when the market's zagging. So I'm giving this to DBMF on conviction, really. And just to confirm, Mike, uh, for mystery category, did you choose DBMF or, or the other one? I didn't, but I'm glad you brought it back to me. I would choose DBMF and Really, it comes down to the same concept as, you know, you want this to be able to really react. And I think Dave eloquently talked about the, that conviction factor. Um, so stay the course, but, you know, have the ability to, to be nimble and react to the market changes. Now we move to the part of the program where our judges can give us their overall battle winner. So, Dave, you're up. Give it to us. Yeah, so the only thing that you can really ding DBMF for here is its short-term recent performance, which is still stellar. It's still, if you own it, it's still probably the very best thing in your portfolio in 2022. Uh, so I give this to DBMF with a little bit of an asterisk on recent performance. Otherwise, it's taking every category for me. Mike, your final chance to weigh in with your overall winner. Yeah, my, my winner is DBMF as well um, for a lot of the same reasons. Um, everything we, we talked about in the, in the process um, you know, I want to throw one star in there. I meant to talk about underperformance. Um, and that is, you know, one of the things that you do need to know, like, it does come down to appetite, right? What fits your ideology? And because of DBMF's um, conviction and mind your leverage, there's always implied leverage in these things. You can get sharper movements um, up or down. So you may have a bigger drawdown than you would expect in this category. I think that's part of owning this category. But it's, I think it's a good, important star to note that with the diversification of KLML, um, KMLM, you might have a little bit less of the violent moves, um, though the violent moves up that you've seen recently tell you you can have what goes up must come down. So it's just going to be that way across the board. But my overall winner, DBMF, and I've actually really enjoyed this, um, did some homework on these ETFs that I've been wanting to do. So I'm glad your listener picked this, this category. Well, our judges have weighed in, and according to my battle scorecard, 
The winner of today's Managed Futures Showdown is DBMF. And uh, this particular ETF, our, our, our judges agreed on for most categories, some great points raised by each of them. Uh, of course, Dave mentioning that he likes the concentration of DBMF, showing conviction. Our judges pointed out that, listen, performance history in this particular ETF category is limited. Mike mentioning, hey, if you want to look at it, maybe a longer term track record, take a look at the mutual fund industry and some of the funds following this this track record that kind of give you an idea of how, how, it's, how it's performed as a group. And uh, it's just started to come around. It's taken a while, but if you're going to invest in this area, you've got to be patient. You're looking for negative correlations to equity and bonds, and uh, that's what these strategies are all about. And, of course, Mike finally pointing out this is a strategic allocation. And uh, both of our judges did an excellent job. And this is one of those ETF categories that sometimes is confusing. It's cloudy. And, uh, again, we're glad that... Uh, uh, Daniel, you were able to bring this particular battle to our attention. That's what we're here for. Thank you again, Mike and Dave, for your thoughtful analysis on today's Managed Futures Showdown. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Ron. Enjoyed it. Thanks for having us. Visit the description section below. We've got research links to our judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. Which ETF battles would you like to see in the next episode? Post your ETF ticker symbols in our YouTube comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. I'm Ron Legi. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.